Becoming something other than what you are with a purpose and intention behind it is a very biblical thing to do. We look at Jesus' life and it says that he who knew no sin became sin. He literally, he became something that he wasn't, but there was intention and there was purpose behind it. It's one of the most sacrificial things you can do, especially this Jesus who left heaven, who left glory to humble himself, to come down onto earth, to be like us, to understand us, to sympathize us. The Bible says, we do not have a high priest that does not sympathize with us. That's what I love so much about Jesus. He understands me, he knows me, he knows my battles, he knows my temptations, and um, he literally became us so that he can die for us, die as us, so that we can resurrect together uh, with him in the resurrection. Isn't that awesome? Paul also talked very similarly in this uh, phrase of becoming. He said, um, I don't remember now where it's at, but he said, I become all things to all people. And Paul was able to, to go into different situations, different circumstances, different people groups, different churches, and actually become them, become like them, uh, in order to win some. And, um, and I've entitled this Becoming Muslim, not that I want to actually become a Muslim, but I want to understand and identify with people that I have absolutely no, no grid for. And this happened because, uh, this is happening in me because we just got back from Jerusalem, the city of the great king. It was a fantastic trip. We love the, the nation of Israel. We love the city of Jerusalem. We love the Jewish people. But what happened to me unexpectedly was the Lord connected us with some Arab Christians and also some Muslims, some hardcore Muslims. And I absolutely fell in love with them. And I asked the Lord to show me and to change my heart, soften my heart, what, ask Him what it would be like to be a Muslim today in the earth. And think about how we turn on the news stations and we see all the war and we see, you know, what's happening with ISIS. And immediately we put the face of our enemy on the face of people. And, you know, God makes that clear never to do that. Our battle is not against flesh and blood, but it's against powers, principalities and the rulers of the kingdoms of darkness of this world. And the Lord began to show me what it would be like to be born as a Muslim in this day and age and to have, you know, the whole world either fear you or hate you. And just imagine what that would be like to, to think people in America hate you, Christians hate you, or even worse, they fear you. And the Lord began to give me his heart for these people. And I just want to say today that, you know, we were sent to Jerusalem by a word from Stacy Campbell about war. And I mean, war is inevitable, it's going to happen, especially when you touch Jerusalem, the apple of God's eye. You're going to see the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob rise up and defend supernaturally that nation as he always has. But, um, you know, his, our weapons of warfare, the Bible says, are not carnal, but they're mighty in God to the pulling down of strongholds. The Lord's given us these weapons of prayer and fasting. And beloved, they're powerful. We have the breastplate of righteousness. We have the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. That's the rhema word. That's the living voice that we have behind us. We have the gospel shoes. We have Matthew 5 on our side. You know, we've got these weapons that literally can't be taken away from us. And beloved, they're powerful. So if you're a Christian, and you turn on the news and you see what's happening around the world, remember that our battle's not against flesh and blood, but we are in a battle, but we, we've been taught to fight differently. And, and, you know, and if you're a Muslim, I stand here representing my people who are Christians, and we just want to say we love you, we embrace you, we're not scared of you, and we don't hate you.